she declined to the first day it was only on my birthday never mind all the lines on the highway give me time to reflect to big do you have your movie queued up we're going to need some snacks Real good morning. I'm just having a good day. food feeds our soul it nourishes us and gives us strength to do great things each day. Cooking together creates lifelong memories. Food has a magical way of bringing us back to a specific moment in time. It is what connects us across the globe and across generations. The food we enjoy is a part of our ethnic identity. Hello, my name is Kasara. I enjoy cooking for fun and would love for you to join me. Together, we'll learn how to make a few easy and delicious recipes. Let's get started. Safety tips before you cook. Ask an adult permission before cooking. There should always be an adult in the kitchen with you when you are cooking. Wash your hands well before you begin handling food. Take extra caution when working with knives, hot liquids, and any appliances. Read labels carefully. Keep your cooking area tidy. If there's a spill, clean it up immediately. Okay, now that we've covered a few tips on how to cook safely, let's get cooking. Hello everyone, I'm so glad you can join me today in trying out a few new recipes. Do you look forward to movie night? Whether you're watching your favorite movie or starting a brand new series, it's great to have some snacks ready to go. For tonight's movie snacks, we'll be making cheesy spinach dip, chicken quesadillas, and a sweet and salty movie snack board. And we'll also learn how to make marshmallows from scratch. Let's get started. For this spinach dip, you will need the following ingredients. Eight ounces of softened cream cheese. One cup of sour cream. 10 ounces of fresh spinach leaves. One teaspoon of minced garlic half a teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper, half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, one and a half cups of shredded mozzarella cheese, one tablespoon of chopped parsley, bread or crackers, cooking spray. These are the instructions. Steam the spinach until wilted. Let cool, then wring out all the excess water Top the spinach. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Coat a small baking dish or skillet with cooking spray. Place the cream cheese, sour cream, cooked spinach, garlic, pepper, salt, Parmesan cheese, and 3 fourths of a cup of mozzarella cheese in a bowl. Stir until well combined. Spread the spinach mixture into a prepared dish. Top with remaining mozzarella cheese. Bake for 20 minutes or until dip is bubbly and cheese is melted. Turn the oven to broil and cook for two to three more minutes or until cheese starts to brown. Sprinkle with chopped parsley, then serve with bread or crackers. 
and you're done. The Secrets of the Forest When the soft winds blow, I hear the trees whispering, their leaves rustling, as they share their thoughts with the universe. They talk about the sun, the sky, the people that roam the earth. They say we are all one. This dish is one of my favorites. We're going to be making cheesy chicken quesadillas. It is filled with gooey cheese and you can add any ingredients you like. Here are the ingredients. Four large flour tortillas. One tablespoon of olive oil. One third of a cup of chopped onion. One and a half cups of cooked chicken, shredded or cubed. Two tablespoons of taco seasoning or fajita seasoning. Two cups of Monterey Jack cheese or Mexican blend shredded. Instructions. Heat one tablespoon of olive oil over medium high heat. Cook onions two to three minutes or until softened. Stir in chicken, seasoning and a quarter cup of water. Simmer three to four minutes or until most of the liquid has evaporated. Lay out the tortillas and sprinkle with half a cup of cheese on the half of tortilla. Add a quarter of the chicken mixture. Fold half of the tortilla over the filling. Brush the outside of each tortilla with olive oil. Heat a nonstick pan over medium low heat. Lightly brown each quesadillas three to four minutes per side or until golden and cheese is melted. Cool two to three minutes and cut each tortilla into three pieces. And there you have it, dinner's ready. You good darling, wonderful darling. Ah. Hello, Miss Darcy. Hello, Cassara, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Living the dream. <laughs> what was the first thing you ever baked? The first thing I ever baked was actually the chocolate chip cookies right over there. I mean, not those ones in particular, but like a similar recipe. And my sister taught me when I was really long, young about your age. And then we changed them into chocolate peanut butter chip cookies. That sounds delicious. They are. My favorite kind of cookies are like the kind that are like soft and chewy on the outside and like really soft and like in the middle. What makes your baking whimsical? I think the fact that we put whimsy into our baking is what makes it whimsical. I feel like when you cook food or you bake, you put a lot of your energy into it. So if you're in a really cranky mood, your baking's not going to turn out as good as if you're in a good mood, because that puts positive energy into your food. It's kind of a weird thing, but that's what I believe. <laughs> Do you have any advice to give to young bakers? My advice to a young baker would be to make everything you can because like you never know what you're gonna love making until you make it. Like when I went to school to become a baker, I thought that I'd be really into pastry and bread and stuff. Nope, cake. When designing a cake, what do you think about? 
The first part that we think about is how many servings you need it for, like how big of a party you're gonna have, because that will tell us how big of a cake we need to make, right? Because obviously like this cake is gonna serve a different amount of people than this cake. Yeah. The second thing we think about is like what it's for. Is it for a birthday or a wedding or a baby shower? Or like what's the party for? And then we think about who it's for or what the theme is. So some people come in and have like a whole design all planned out. And other people come in and they're like, we need help. And that's when we just ask a lot of questions. So we'll be like, what is the person like? What's their favorite color? What's the theme? What's like, and we'll ask a million questions. And then from that, my brain kind of percolates it all and goes, here's an idea. <laughs> After you do a few thousand cakes, it's easier to come up with ideas. So I heard a rumor that you enjoy s'mores. Yeah. Would you enjoy learning to make marshmallows from scratch? Definitely. And maybe we'll use them on a different kind of cookie because we like to think outside the box. Maybe. Hmm, let's do it. So today we are going to learn to make vanilla marshmallows, which are by no means the only kind of marshmallows you can make, but they're a good start. So we're going to bloom our gelatin with some water. And then we're going to have some water, sugar, and glucose in a pot. And we're going to boil this to 245 to 250 degrees. Because safety-wise, we definitely want to be very, very careful with boiling sugar. You have to respect the sugar, get an adult, maybe wear some gloves, so that if you do get some on your hands, you can pull the glove off really fast so it won't burn you as bad. Important thing, thermometer, so that we know when we get to the right temperature. Did you know that if you're boiling sugar with water, you don't want to stir it? Oh. Yeah, because if you get sugar crystals up on the side here and they come back down into the boiled sugar, that's how you crystallize your sugar. And it turns into sugar crystals again. Ooh, it's starting to bubble. Yeah, and if you see, they're starting to look a little thicker. We're going to pour this boiling sugar in with, remember the, the gelatin that we bloomed with water? We're just gonna pour her straight in. Some people make their marshmallows with eggs, in which case you wouldn't wanna do this this way because you would totally just scramble your eggs. And then we put it on the mixer with the whisk. And you know how you know it's done? You can touch the bowl and it's not hot anymore. And then see, marshmallow. Marshmallows get their name from the mallow plant that grows in the marshes. One of the most popular ways to eat marshmallows is to roast them over a fire, in baking, or in a steaming cup of hot chocolate. Today we'll be using marshmallows to decorate cookies. Shaky, 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 shaky. You got this. You're, you're basically a pro. So we put a clip on the end, so it will not stick to everything. And then we want to move a little quick, so it doesn't set up. And this is a mixture of cornstarch and icing sugar to make it much less sticky. So we're gonna lay that down. And you could also just put this in a pan, like put this in a cake pan, this stuff, and then pour your marshmallow in there, and then you just cut it up afterwards. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make mini marshmallows. So we're gonna pipe a line, do you know how to pipe? You want to try one? Yeah. <laughs> this side's still all sticky. Yeah. So, we need to go on this side too. The sound effects help. And then it won't stick to you as nearly as much. Kind of satisfying. Right? Ready to make a mini? Yeah. We're gonna turn these marshmallows into a cookie decoration. So what I did is I took some of this mix, the icing sugar and the cornstarch, and I mixed it with a little bit of powdered food coloring. So what do you think we're gonna make with these? I know I ask a lot of questions, don't I? Popcorn? Yeah! Good guess.
perfect. Perfect. But that felt easier, right? Yeah. Beautiful. That, oh my, look at that. Look at, tell me that's not perfect. I flattered myself with chocolate. Darcy for showing me how to make marshmallows and teaching me how to decorate cookies. It's such a fun time. Thank you for coming. We had a great time having you here and I'm so glad that you enjoyed yourself. What do you do with an idea? Written by Kobe Yamada. One day, I had an idea. Where did it come from? Why is it here, I wondered. What do you do with an idea? At first, I didn't think much of it. It seemed kind of strange and fragile. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just walked away from it. I acted like it didn't belong to me. But it followed me. I worried what others would think. What would people say about my idea? I kept it to myself. I hid it away and I didn't talk about it. I tried to act like everything was the same as it was before my idea showed up. But there was something magical about my idea. I had to admit, I felt better and happier when it was around. It wanted food. It wanted to play. Actually, it wanted a lot of attention. It grew bigger and we became friends. I showed it to other people even though I was afraid of what they would say. I was afraid that if people saw it, they would laugh at it. I was afraid they would think it was silly. And many of them did. They said it was no good. They said it was too weird. They said it was a waste of time and that it would never become anything. And at first, I believed them. 
I actually thought about giving up on my idea. I almost listened to them. But then I realized, what do they really know? This is my idea, I thought. No one knows it like I do. And it's okay if it's different and weird and maybe a little crazy. I decide to protect it, to care for it. I fed it good food. I worked with it, I played with it, but most of all, I gave it my attention. My idea grew and grew, and so did my love for it. I built it a new house, one with an open roof, where it could look up at the stars, a place where it could be safe to dream. I liked being with my idea. It made me feel more alive, like I could do anything. It encouraged me to think big, and then to think bigger. It shared its secrets with me. It showed me how to walk on my hands because, it said, it is good to have the ability to see things differently. I couldn't imagine my life without it. Then one day, something amazing happened. My idea changed right before my very eyes. It spread its wings and took flight. It burst into the sky. I don't know how to describe it, but it went from being here to being everywhere. It wasn't just a part of me anymore. It was now a part of everything. And then I realized what you do with an idea. You change the world. Movie night snack board. I have popcorn, yogurt covered pretzels, chocolate acai berries, strawberries, gummies, and mini oranges. You can use any snacks you have available. Now, just have fun creating your perfect movie snack board. Instructions. Prepare a large tray or platter. Arrange small bowls throughout. Arrange popcorn, candy, fruit, cheese, and other snacks in groupings around the tray. Almost there. Ta-da! Serve for movie night and enjoy! Every culture has its own unique celebrations. Whichever special occasion you are celebrating, whether it be a large or an intimate gathering, there is one thing that remains true everywhere around the world. Rituals and celebrations help ground us in tradition. It gives us the opportunity to feel excited about what's to come, to laugh, to cry, and to create special memories together as a community. Thank you.